Hello and welcome to Diabetes Connections in the News. I'm Stacey Sims and these are the top diabetes stories and headlines of the past seven days. As always, I'm going to link up my sources in the Facebook comments where we are live. We're also live on YouTube and in the show notes at diabetes-connections.com when this airs as a podcast. In the News is brought to you by the world's worst diabetes mom. Real life stories of raising a child with diabetes available in paperback on Kindle or as an audiobook all at amazon.com. Our top story this week, big issue for a popular app. Users of SugarMate have been told as of this week, November 4th to be precise, customers in the U.S. will lose connection. Those outside the U.S. have seen issues since October. And this is because of a change Dexcom made to its servers. SugarMate says Dexcom is working with them to fix the issue. Basically, they're going to join the Dexcom partner API. We've told you about that. It's how third-party apps can talk with Dexcom. In the meantime, Night Scout is one of the alternatives if you use SugarMate. And a quick note, Tandem acquired SugarMate last year. And you'll recall Dexcom owns a small piece of Tandem. So it looks like this will all probably work out. But exactly how in the long run, we're going to have to wait and see. A study of dented internal clocks seems to build evidence for a theory that people who work late or irregular hours are more at risk for diabetes. Researchers at the University of Pennsylvania created a timing mismatch by altering the function of a molecule within the brains of mice, shortening their circadian rhythms from 24 to 21 hours. These mice gained more weight, had higher blood sugar, and fattier livers. And this all corrected when the researchers changed their environment, sleep, and meals to match that shorter 21-hour day. So they say it might be a good idea for shift workers to try to do the same, eating meals and going to bed in a cycle that works better for them. A new blood glucose meter gets FDA approval. This is the POGO with a 10-test cartridge technology. So the strips and the lancers are loaded inside already. You don't carry anything separate. And you just put your finger down, press the button. They're calling this automatic blood glucose monitoring, or ABGM. Now, on the inside, it's still a basic finger stick and blood collection, but you don't see any of that on the outside. Of course, there is a Bluetooth-connected app for you and your healthcare team to use. Again, the product is called Pogo. The app is Patterns. New numbers out for diabetes around the world, and the International Diabetes Federation says it's a pandemic of unprecedented magnitude. The IDF says more than 10% of adults worldwide live with diabetes. By 2045, that number will be one in eight, they predict. The report also says that one in two people with diabetes across the world who need insulin cannot access or afford it. The theme of World Diabetes Day this November 14th is access to diabetes care. Some good news for people with type 1. When more intensive glucose management starts early, it greatly reduces the future risk of heart and kidney issues. This info comes from a look back at the DCCT and EDICT trials, which are 100% worth looking into if you're not familiar with them. By the way, in these trials, intensive glucose control was pegged at an A1C of 7. The riskier group had an A1C of 9 or above, and the earlier that A1C was brought down to 7, the lower the risk of complications. So how common is type 2 remission? It's hard to say, but a new study from Scotland suggests it's more common than we might think. These University of Edinburgh scientists say in Scotland, it's 1 in 20. They looked at everybody in the country over the age of 30 with type 2 based on A1C levels, and that's about 160,000 people. Then they said during the study year, 7,700 people went into remission, which means that their A1Cs dropped to 6.5 without medication. So those people were older. They had lost weight since their diagnosis. They had no history of glucose-lowering therapy or bariatric surgery, and they generally had healthier blood glucose readings at the time of their diagnosis. We have college scholarships to tell you about, at least a contest. Sunita Athletics is partnering with Insulet to award four $5,000 scholarships to people with type 1 in honor of National Diabetes Awareness Month. The athletic fashion wear maker is looking for Sunita Scholars. The co-founders have a younger brother with type 1, and their fitness gear is known for really good pockets. To be eligible, students across the U.S. must be either a graduating senior in high school or a current undergrad and have type 1. Applications close on November 30th. There are a lot of events and, and things happening around the diabetes community for this Awareness Month. Friends for Life Virtual starts next week, as does another conference called Together T1D. I mentioned this one because it's got a powerful lineup with Olympian Charlotte Drury. 
and Pietro Marsala, the first person with T1D to get a commercial pilot's license to fly in the U.S., and a lot more. And finally, a big happy diversary to a previous guest of the podcast. Yerachemiel Altman is marking 60 years with Type 1 on November 8th. I'll link up my episode with him. He has worked on early insulin pumps. He's probably worn every bit of tech you can think of. We are wishing you continued good health, and we thank you for sharing your experience and your wisdom with us. A quick reminder that the podcast this week is with Ken Rodenheiser, a diabetes educator who now works with Dexcom. He explains how he went from angry and lonely as a teen to helping others start off on the right foot at diagnosis. It's a great story you can listen to wherever you get your podcasts, or if you're listening to this on a podcast app, just go back one episode. And that's in the news for this week. If you like it, please share it with somebody in the diabetes community. Thanks so much for joining me, and I'll see you back here soon. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.